Hello world, and we are back. My name's Kyle Fischel, and this is going to be episode 59 of my poker vlog. And for this session, I played a live stream game at Jacksonville Best Bet. It was truly a fun experience. However, playing on a live stream, I think also adds another dynamic to the game. I personally played a little bit more tight and a little bit more game theory optimal than I usually do. For fear of massive glaring mistakes being just shown out there for the world. I played in their deep 2-5 game, but they also run lower 2-2 two -two stakes. So if you're in the area and want to play on a live stream game and be able to re-watch it yourself to improve your game, I think that's a great resource that anyone can utilize and should if they're trying to get better at poker. The announcers themselves do a very good job analyzing the hands and discussing strategies during the stream. So just watching it and participating in the chat can help you out a great deal. However, for this video, I'm giving my personal thoughts about the hands that I played and keep in mind that from my perspective, I can't actually see what the other people have. So it might be easy and obvious for someone to say that a hand should have been played a certain way, but I don't know that at the time. Without further ado, we're gonna roll right into some hands. Welcome back everybody to Best Bet Live. Jordan Spina here coming to you from the booth here at 201 Monument Road as always. First interesting hand. There is a $10 button straddle, one caller to a middle position player who raises to $40. I'm in the hijack with ace king off suit. This is an obvious three best situation. I should have the best hand. I can isolate and I can build the pot playing a premium hand in position. So I make it $130. It folds all the way to the pre-flop raiser and he makes the call. When the flop is king nine three two diamonds, this is an easy C bet spot when it's checked to me. So I do a relatively standard down bet which means I bet slightly less than I did pre-flop. I bet $120. There are plenty of, of gut shot straight draws and diamonds that can pay me off. My opponent calls very quickly. When the turn is the king of spades, I'm quite happy. My opponent checks to me, and now it's just a question of sizing. I want to size to a point where I can have a good stack to pot ratio to jam on the river given safe runouts. On this card, I want to size up a bit. I want to charge any diamond draws out there. And if my opponent has a hand like king queen or king jack, they're going to pay me off 100% of the time. So sizing up's a good option here. I bet $275. Well, my opponent nearly snap jams all in. At this point, I felt like I took a good 15 to 20 seconds to make my decision. With, with the lights and camera and everything, I wanted to take my time to make sure I didn't make a mistake. And I was fearing the possibility my opponent could have pocket nines or pocket threes. But everything being said, I think every king would play this way and some diamond draws. The 15 to 20 seconds is how long it felt like it was in my mind. Now let's see how fast this went real time. Oh boy. Russ picks the wrong time. The lights cameras made me perceive time a little bit differently in the moment. My opponent is drawing dead. And apart from what the graphics say, it was a full $1,200 double up. My opponent had much more than $600 sitting there all in. So we get a full double up very early into the stream, and we're quite happy about that. Nice early gift from Russ. Looks yeah. like Russ was just trying to mix it up, get that action going nice and early. Big early double here for Kyle. Here is a shot of me getting my chips counted. And here is a shot of me getting a shot of me getting my chips counted. Fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break. That's like 16 walls. Kyle's going to take the biggest pot of the night so far early on the stream, making almost 900 in that one. Yeah, Russ is going to top off. He's going to 
get back. It bought in for 15. Next interesting hand. Literally while I'm collecting and counting and stacking my chips, I am dealt pocket jacks. The opponent from the last hand raises to $30. Now a semi-reliable live tell is that when someone wins a big pot and they're currently in the process of stacking their chips, they often have a marginal range when they're using chips that aren't even counted yet to get into the pot. Me knowing this makes me believe a three bet would get less than zero credit and I'd be playing against a very large undefined range by my opponent, which could lead to poor decisions later. So with that being said, I do a very conservative pot controlling just call with a semi-premium and so we go heads up to a flop when the flop is ace king three now i'm quite happy that i did a semi pot controlling just call because even if my opponent is bluffing this is just simply one of those boards that i'm not willing to, to call multiple streets of betting on so we do a fairly easy and ultimately correct fold there next interesting hand there is a button straddle two calls to me I'm in the cutoff with pocket sixes. I'm going to raise this one as my image at the table is quite good. And there's plenty of boards that I can represent and see bet and win post flop, even if I don't hit my set. So I raised to $35. I'm going to make it 35 Two black sixes here for Kyle, raising up to 35 He's going to put those chips to work here. He's going to raise up the small to medium pair. There's only one caller, so we're going heads up to a flop, which comes king 10 4. An eerily identical flop to the hand where I had ace king. So, with that being said, when it's checked to me, I'm going to play it the, with the exact same line I did when I had ace king, and I bet $45. Well, my opponent looks at me kind of suspiciously and then grabs chips and grabs extra chips and decides that he's going to raise to $120. Seems kind of odd because on this board there's not even a flush draw. So the only actual draw he could have is exactly queen jack. With my exact hand, I really don't think I can call this. I mean, I'm repping a pair of kings and if he thinks he can beat that, I mean, good for him. So I do a semi-reluctant fold, and my opponent decides to show me a 10. And I don't quite understand his thought process on this, because with any king, I'm going to call at least one raise, if not jam and get it all in, and get a full double up like I did the last time I had ace king. In terms of GTO and having a long-term betting strategy, I played ace king and pocket sixes relatively the same way up to the flop and in both times i got raised with middle pair one time i was able to just call all in and get a full double up and in the other time i folded when i didn't have the best hand my point here is theoretically when you raise middle pair if all the hands that are beating you are going to call and you're going to lose a bunch of money and all the hands that are losing can just easily fold. Raising with middle pair is probably not the greatest strategy in terms of long-term poker success, but that's just my opinion. Right now, I'm gonna have to ask you to pause the video and go below and hit that subscribe button. Helps me out a ton, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Next hand of note. With two limbs to the cutoff, he raises to $20. I'm on the button with Ace King off suit. I three bet to $65. Back nine. Kyle waking up with another big one right behind him. Ace King on the button. 20, probably a bit of a bit of a tell here. That's a small raise with two limpers. Do you think if he had a big hand, he'd try to protect it a little bit more, at least 30 or 30. The pre-flop aggressor calls again. So we're going heads up to a flop again, which comes King nine, six, two hearts. My opponent checks to me. Thinking I need to pot control slightly, as well as mix up the lines I'm taking when I do have ace king on king high boards, I choose to check back this flop this time. 
The turn is another six. Not a particularly good card for me, as my opponent could have a six, seeing how he's been playing and how everyone's been playing. When my opponent bets $60, it's a pretty easy call at this point. I should have the best hand a lot of the time. And the certain situations where my opponent does have a six, the pot control could have saved me a street of betting, given the fact that I don't think he'd fold a six, and I'm probably not going to fold ace-king. The river is the eight of clubs. So obviously, I do the appropriate thing and check out of turn. You what? Yes, you can see it on my face when I realized that I just checked out of turn. And this was definitely not an angle shoot. This was theoretically pressure from the lights, the cameras, my first stream, a bit of nerves. Anyone can choke out there. It, it happens. Another bad pass, this time Austin, and Austin with a dunk. Oh, and he missed it. Second and five, downfield, wide open, but unable to secure it was Aaron Jones. Unfortunately for me, this gives my opponent a very easy decision. He can just check it back and making my check stand. So I have to show down a hand that probably could have gotten a lot more money. Sometimes the nerves get to you. Loses some value there because Russ might have, with a heart draw, missing. Big mistake here from Kyle. Checking out a turn, giving Russ yes. the option that if he checks, it's just we're just going to be able to show our hands. So, so Russ doesn't have to call a river bet with middle pair. Hopefully, we can be more poised next time. Next hand of note. With two limps to me, I'm in the big blind with pocket aces. I'm sure that's like everybody says it as well. <laughs> Oh, yes. Gonna size up here, especially as I'll be playing out of position for the rest of the hand. I make it $35. This is designed to narrow people's ranges significantly so that their hands are easier to read post flop. Well, only one of the limpers calls, so we're going heads up to a flop, which comes ace, king, seven, two diamonds. On this board, since I have nearly the entire board locked up i believe this is a pretty standard check spot hope my opponent can take a stab at it or give him the chance to catch up if he has absolutely nothing unfortunately he checks behind the turn is the four of spades now with two flush draws out there several potential straight draws gotta go for some amount of value when you have top set i bet 35 dollars, but unfortunately because my opponent has absolutely nothing he folds just making a hand is only half the battle in this game Next hand of note, there is a button straddle to $10. I'm in the small blind with king queen off suit. Gonna just call this one as it's a strong hand, not quite strong enough to raise first to act. Well, the opponent who is second to act decides to raise to $50. He should have a very snug range given his position and the bloatedness of the pot given the straddle and the one limper already. With that in mind, it folds to me. I don't really like getting in the habit of limping and then just folding to a raise. I think it's too exploitable and too weak, so pretty much all the hands I'm going to limp, I'm going to at least call and see the flop. The flop is 10-8-5 all clubs. Having the king of clubs, I'm quite happy with this board. As I play in flow, I check to the preflop aggressor, who bets $65. I'm not quite willing to give up with this hand just yet, as I have the second nut flush draw, two overs, backdoor straight draw. There are a ton of cards on this turn that would give me what I perceive to be the best hand or the actual best hand. The turn is the nine of clubs, a card that I think is quite good. I checked to my opponent believing that he would bet here with any ace high flushes and I would theoretically fold this time. When the river's the six of spades, my opponent checks it back. I don't really believe my opponent would bet an ace high flush draw and then check when he makes his flush. I believe he would go for as many streets of value as possible. So with that being said, I believe I have the best hand and I bet $110. Well, my opponent raises to $240. Almost a min click. Not a great spot to be in. This is an aspect where I think the stream plays a role. I don't really want it to be seen out there that I fold king high flushes to min clicks. Because I believe it opens myself up to being bluffed heavily in the future. I think this is kind of a spot where I'm losing most of the time, if not always. 
but just to protect myself against future exploitation, I think this is supposed to be a call. I think my opponent could also be bluffing with a queen high flush or severely overvaluing slash turning a straight into a bluff. Accompanied that with the fact that I have a huge chip stack based on my early run good. I choose to call this one. As I said, I don't want to, it to be known that I'll fold king high flushes to single raises. So I paid. I'm going to show the king. Hopefully in the attempt to dissuade people from trying to bluff me in the future. The next hand is quite interesting. There is a button straddle. Two players call before. It just doesn't happen that much at these stakes. There's just not a lot of four betting. And when you do, they automatically think you have a monster. But sometimes, you know, if you play a hand slow enough, if they, ha if they have what they... A hand that they should three should be three betting out of the blinds with, like ace queen, king queen. Before a middle position player raises to sixty, I'm on the cutoff with pocket sevens, and this is a spot where I truly believe I can make this a profitable call long term. I believe if I call, all other players will have the right price to call, meaning I can go four ways to the flop in position with. A medium pair there are plenty of boards that will favor me over other people namely undercard boards and additionally if a board like ace seven comes out I'm likely gonna get a full double up based on an ace X hand so this is definitely a hand I'm willing to play so I called the other players call as well and the flop is king 10 10 two spades this is a board that when i see it i truly believe that i have the strongest range here i believe if someone has a king or a 10 they have the potential to just lead out into the field of four people and hope someone can call them with a flush draw so when all three players check to me i really don't think anyone has a king or a 10. with the goal of gaining maximum protection and the fact that i truly believe i have the best hand here I put out a wager of $135. Only one player calls, and given certain turn cards, I'm likely going to shut down and hopefully see a free river card. But when the turn is the five of hearts, it's really not a card I'm going to slow down on. I can still protect slash get value from all flush draws and maybe even a gut shot straight draw like ace queen. Additionally, I think a second bullet really tells the story of I have 10x and could possibly get a king to fold. The fact that there's better hands that I theoretically could get to fold and even worse hands that could possibly call and get me more, more value for this hand, I choose to send a second barrel out there of $275. Okay, no check for Kyle. He's going to continue betting. 527 in the middle. And upon launching this barrel, I get a fold. It's all going according to my plan. <laughs> I'm very happy with the results of this hand. I'm very happy with how I played it. This line is very good multi-way when facing a paired board. Next interesting hand. There is a button straddle. I'm in the big blind with pocket aces again. Yes, I'm picking up some premiums here. I'm going to size up here, same as last time, trying to narrow people's ranges to premium so it's easier to read post-flop. I raised to $50. It folds all the way to the button, who thinks for a while and makes the call. He really, just based on how long he took and his whole mannerism, his hand looks very, very weak to me in real time. When the flop is ace, eight, four, all spades, the fact that I believe I have all the aces locked up, the only hand that would call a C bet are two spades, which has me drawing pretty thin, and a one spade type hand. I think this is a pretty easy check call candidate. So I check, my opponent bets $60. And this is a pretty easy call, hoping that the board pairs and I can just lead out and hopefully be against a flush and get a bunch of money in there. We got 160 in the middle, and Jay's got about 720 behind. Call from the nine. 
think that's probably what Kyle was doing, looking at these stacks. However, the turn is the King of Hearts. This is a very interesting card because I think it's going to reveal a lot about my opponent's hand. When I check to him, he chooses to check it back. Now, on this King of Hearts, I believe any King of Spades would just bet here. They would now have the second best pair along with the Nut Flush Draw. A King of Spades is just too strong to check back on this board. So when my opponent checks on this turn card, I really don't think he even has a single pair or a flush of any kind. That's because you're stupid. So when the river is the three of diamonds, I believe I have to bet here because I don't want it to check through. I'm really trying to target single paired hands of medium strength, like eight, nine, nine of spades, maybe pocket tens with a spade. Hands like that, I think we'll call the $75 bet. I can get some relatively thin value from a crying call. Obviously, I don't know that my opponent is as strong as ace, queen, queen of spades. Betting 75, I get snap called by a hand that strong and theoretically could have gotten more. You know, Munson, uh, to be up a creek without a paddle, to, to have the whole world in the palm of your hand and then, and then blow it, you know, it's a figure of speech. But my opponent played very pot controlly and good for him. Next interesting hand. There is a button straddle to $10. Two calls I call from under the gun with ace three of spades. As my goal is to play suited aces highly multi-way. And I can get a great deal of money flush over flushing someone. Well, the cutoff raises to $35. This is not a size that's ever going to get folds out of any player, not even one of them. So when the button straddler and two limpers call to me, this is an easy call with a suited ace to go five ways to a flop. 25 more with a 6-3. Will thinking about it with queen seven. Pretty trashy, but he's going to come along. Which comes nine, eight, five two spades when it checks to me this is actually a board where i think leading out is the best option the preflop aggressor should really not connect with this board too much i look at his stack and he only has about 200 dollars left i believe if i bet a half his stack size he'll just jam it with hands like king queen of spades Maybe even like queen, jack, no spade. I, this opponent has thrown the money around. I believe he'll get it in with even the worst hand. And if he does somehow connect or have a hand like pocket tens, I can rely on my flush draw and my ace as outs against him and still have the right odds to make this call. So I lead out for $90. He jams all in, which is what I'm expecting. It's actually 205 for the total. When it folds to me, I'm very happy to just snap call this off. Very odd to see ace nine here as my, my ace is not live and I'm relying on just a flush draw. Which actually ends up hitting. However, the turned nine and rivered eight actually gave my opponent a full house. So we unfortunately lose that one. All right, a final hand of note. As with the theme of mixing it up, when... On a button straddle, when I'm in the small blind with pocket kings, I'm going to limp this one. Hopefully get to do the whole on gibbons where I'm first to act limp raise. As last time I played a limped pot, it was small raise with some callers. So the plan is to limp, hopefully someone raises to 25 or 30, and then I can raise to 200 and really isolate someone playing a weak hand. Unfortunately, that does not happen. There are three limpers and the button checks it back. So we're going five ways to a flop, which comes ace, king, queen, rainbow. As I somehow flop a set again, first to act, I think this is a board where I should check. With four other players in the pot, someone has to have a queen jack or a king 10 or, or some kind of pair plus gut shot they're willing to throw a bet out there that I could theoretically raise. However, on the flop, it appears no one has anything as it checks all the way through. When the turn is the four of spades, bringing a spade draw, now I can comfortably lead out and hopefully someone with a single pair type hand or maybe a spade draw can call. I bet $35 and get two callers. Call. Four points. Call for six. Seven points. Three points. I believe Jeff called. I think Diesel called first as well. Yeah, D Diesel definitely calls with an ace. With an ace. And the river. Drum roll, please, Billy. Give me that river. Oh, no. 
Well, the river is an offsuit eight. As there is no nut changing card, I should have the best hand most of the time. I'm going to go for a bigger sizing as there's plenty of random two pair combinations that a limping range of two people could have hit. Anyone could have ace eight or king four or something like that that could pay this off. So I bet $85. Unfortunately, no one had much of anything and we take another small pot to end the night and we leave shortly after that. Okay, so after three hours of play, we are into the game for $1,200, out of the game for $2,350, which equates to a $1,150 profit, $383 an hour, or 76 big blinds an hour. All right, if you watched all the way to this point, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. There will be more to come next week.